Hey guys, well this is my variation of a uh, manometer uh, for testing EVAP systems on vehicles. Uh, all mine are old, but they still have EVAP. And somewhere down the line, those tubes get brittle, they get dry rotted, there's a leak someplace. And uh, to have a shop uh, analyze it uh, is out of my price range, and I do all my own stuff anyway. So uh, I made a well style manometer and the advantage to that one, it's more compact, it's more versatile to me uh, and it gives you a true water column reading versus the U-shape where one side goes up, one side goes down and that's how you get your differential uh, of the water column or your total water column. I use this independently uh, from the smoker. I have a paint can style smoker and had it hooked up to that and I noticed some bubbles around the lid and so you know that's not a foolproof way because that leaks a little bit and this is very precise. Uh, the guys that have been doing the U-shaped I've seen on YouTube uh, they were showing a difference between full closed and 20 thousandths maybe the width of a paper clip. So you're only talking about a quarter inch window of full sealed uh, versus, uh, you know, your leak. So that's very hard to, hard to read. I wanted something with a little bit more of a window so I could see better. Uh, I'll tell you about that. I, I'm, on the second part of this, uh, there's a build and I'm going to also throw in a little bit more that I found out about the other regulator and if you want to use the U-style uh, manometer. So, but for this, uh, we're all set up to go. We're pressurized. I have a couple of movable collars. One down here, that's what I call my static pressure. When I release the uh, end of the tube uh, and just give it full air, like a full leak, it will drop to that level and then once I do that I have right here I have a my test tube right here that's and I drilled a 20 thousandths hole into that that's just that rigid uh, plastic tubing I get down to the hardware store it fits great in a uh, quarter inch uh, vinyl tube and for that I have a small set of drill bits uh, they go from oh I think it goes 39 thousandths down to uh, 13 thousandths so I just drilled a 20 thousandths hole into this and that'll be my benchmark of uh, where the meter goes so I can get this silly uh, tripod to work for me and it was fighting me before so let's see if I can get it to work for me now so bear with me this isn't the greatest setup at all so but right there and I'll kind of hand do this All right there. You can see this is my water column. It raised a little bit on me. That's the top. So that's zero leaks right there. This one here, I have, I already have it set. I tested it a couple times. When I plug in my 20 thousandths, it'll drop to that level. So right now I'm going to uncap the uh, end of the tube right now. And now I'm going to put my other test tube on there. And you can see that's where the water level, that's 20 thousandths. So to show you consistency, unplug. We'll plug this back in and it goes back in the same spot. And one more time and we'll plug in and right back to the same spot. So I'll go into full cap now and it'll start building pressure. It takes oh maybe five minutes for this thing to pressurize uh, but it will pressurize to a zero leak. Uh, the good thing about this is instead of a quarter inch window that I'm looking at for a 20 thousandths leak to a zero leak I take my tape here and I take from the top of this one to the top of this one you can see I'm getting a little over two inches of window that uh, that I can actually see. This column does take a while, it takes about five minutes, and it will just keep on creeping up. Believe me, I've timed it. I know I know it will go back up to that point. 
so that's my uh, my variation of this uh, this style of manometer like I said cool factor is I did find uh, clear tubing uh, and the second part of this or maybe the third part of this uh, I'll give you all the links to that stuff and also what I have found with the other style manometers uh, you want to do the u-shape and get it to give you a larger differential and uh, but you can see that thing is moving it takes a while like I said it takes about five minutes for it to equalize so but this I think is a lot better uh, it's more portable you know and uh, I think it'll work out better but I've learned a bit about these manometers here and uh, I just want to share that with you so this is my version and uh, stay tuned if you like what you saw now really when the system performs so good in my opinion it's sensitive I don't think it there's any uh, need for a flow meter uh, because this is uh, sensitive enough to pick up uh, the small leaks uh, the way they did it on the commercial ones, they actually used a flow meter to uh, tell how big the leak was and they used the uh, pressure gauge or the water column gauge to uh, pressure test uh, the system. Uh, I don't see where you need a flow meter with this system. It's sensitive enough that it will pick up uh, a 20 thou hole and that's the uh, that's the benchmark of uh, what you need to know. So uh, that's pretty much my opinion of it. So hopefully, uh, you know, some of this guy, uh, will work out for you guys uh, if you're interested. Uh, you know, give me some feedback and uh, I'll answer any questions I can. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you before. Let me raise this tripod a little bit here. And this is just a regular manometer. The tube goes both ways. And right now, I have uh, I have my one pound regulator that I'm not using. So if I cap it, there's my cap it a couple times here and find uh, zero. Okay, top of that magnet zero. There we go. There, and that looks good. And then I'll plug in my twenty thousandths. Uh, test hole that comes in right there and so if I measure that it gives me about three quarters of a inch to tell if I have a leak that's pretty uh, pretty fine right there so what I discovered was if I left my 20 thousandths test hole on and zoom you out a little bit here you see that blue mark right down there while I leave this air on and I start closing that ball valve coming off the uh, main pressure the low side of the regulator and I get that down to about here or a little bit less it'll give you a great uh, a lot greater differential of your reading so I'm gonna start closing this valve and that should start pulling down when I start getting to the it's really hard with a ball valve to achieve this but you can see it's starting to move down right there okay see if we can stop it right about there now this is the 20 thousandths hole right there and if I take that, now I uh, cap it off. Okay, now I'm in full. full. It changes this slightly. But now, I don't know if you can see the difference. I have to move this up a little bit. And that's about as far as it'll go up. But now, my this is zero leaks. This is my 20 thousandths. Leak. So I'll hook my 20 thousandths up and you'll see it'll start coming up here. Now it's coming up to the edge of this card. So instead of three quarters of an inch, you have four inches. By playing with that pressure, depending on where you set your 20 thousandths, it'll give you a lot larger window to see. You know, it makes it a little easier to see. 
that's what I discovered on this. And I'll show you how I dealt with it before. So I'm going to shut this off, get the camera on the other side of the bench. So what I was doing uh, when I was showing you the manometer on the, uh, on the lift there, this is your low pressure side of the regulator. Here's my valve. Uh, I only put this valve on here because I needed to make a connection, that's all. It's a, a union. And then from there it goes straight out to the manometer. So I was actually flow controlling both, uh, both sides of the tubes here. One to the manometer and one to the test side of the, uh, of the unit itself that you would plug into your vehicle. Uh, so what I found, easiest way for me to do it before and I think I used all my fittings up uh, on other stuff, but you can have a shutoff valve here, but if you just interrupt right here with a needle valve, that gives you great control over this whole system. Uh, and uh, you, can dial, you can dial that thing so it's two inches, three inches, whatever, and give you a, a fairly good window to read. Uh, you know, because I was doing it at a little over one pound. If you were using a 0 0.4 uh, pound regulator, uh, that difference would have been even tighter. So I found this out. So I thought I'd pass this down to you, but you can, you can control it by throwing a needle valve right here so you have your shutoff valve for your low pressure side, throw a needle valve in, uh, you tee it, uh, one goes to your uh, test adapter for your vehicle, one goes to your manometer. And then you can just start off slow, put your 20 thousandths test hole on there, and dial it, you know, you can open it all the way, figure out what your water column is, put your 20 thousandths on there, and you can start dropping that down and you can get like i said you can get three four inches whatever you want uh to make it a lot easier to see uh see everything because like i said when these when you get these uh pressure regulators they do have a small orifice on there now you're just putting full shop air on that other side without that orifice so and there's no way really to use these these are set up to go into the propane tank but I've seen the orifices even smaller than that off the 20 pounders. So that's basically what you're doing. Uh, you know, you might be able to uh, put a needle valve on that side, but I would put it on the low pressure side. That seems to work really good. So, all right guys, that's what I found out. And now I'll show you the build on my uh, well style manometer. Okay, this is the build for this well style manometer that I showed you before. This is a piece of 4 inch PVC I got at Home Depot. Uh, this is Schedule 40. Uh, bought it in a 2 foot length, cost about 9 or 10 bucks. Then you need two caps. Make sure they're Schedule 40 so it fits the pipe because there is another 4 inch cap that won't fit the pipe. Uh, these are a little more pricey, they're about $8 a piece. So you need two, one bottom, one top. On the top one here, I drilled and tapped it for a quarter inch pipe thread. And this is a quarter inch barb for the tubing that'll feed the pressure to it. And I just, I tapped that with my uh, pipe tap. Uh, you gotta go nice and easy when you cut the threads on this stuff. It will go all up on you. Uh, put a little bit of Teflon tape on there, got a good tight seal inside. The nipple is just about flush to this, so when I want to dump the fluid out, I can just turn it upside down and let it drain out that way. Uh, that, and then I drilled the hole here. Uh, that'll be for the pipe that goes through with the elbows. That's a little tricky. Uh, the Schedule 40 pipe uh, measures 0.840. Spade bit is 0.875, so I just filed equal amounts on both sides uh, of this. So I just came in slightly less than the 840, and then I just went in with the file and touched it up. So that'll give me a good tight fit that way. 
how these elbows work is I set them in opposite directions like that and what happens you have a reserve of fluid down here I didn't want to fill it all the way up here I didn't have to uh, you know you only need you know a couple inches of fluid in here you're only drawing about half inch three quarter of an inch out of the well to go up 18 inches on your uh, sidebar so the way that works is I'll take this apart and uh, then this will go in this way like so and it's a little bit of a snug fit and that's what I wanted for that so that'll go in that way this guy will face up like that I'll cut it down so it hits flush against the uh, housing here but then this one here is facing down that one's facing up I'll put a little piece of pipe on here so I end up being maybe a half inch uh, above the bottom of the pipe here and uh, I'll get that all glued together and then you put your side pipe on and glue the caps on so that's uh, pretty much it for now guys uh, I'll get this glued up and I'll show you I'll show you what it looks like all right well hey there guys I got this unit uh, glued up here uh, you can see I had to run extra primer around there and lots of glue lots of glue for this uh, so that's done this is the cool factor here this is a half inch uh, PVC but this is clear I got this at Home Depot I'll give you the link in the description of this whole thing I bought a five foot length of this I thought this would be really cool now I don't have to worry about putting you know vinyl tube on there and stuff to see but this is the leftover piece here uh, it's got like a bluish tint to it but you can see the water through there really easy so everything's uh, all the glue is good and hard now a uh, couple things that I've done to this thing now I was worried because of now I do have water in this so I can't tilt it too much uh, that the leverage this is the only thing that's into the main body right here so this could conceivably get you know torqued and this could get broken uh, if you guys ever watch any of my other stuff uh, you know I do have a 3d printer and uh, I like messing around with that thing designing stuff on the CAD and stuff so I want to fashion a uh, support for that so uh, what I ended up doing here is I got into the CAD program measured all my dimensions and centers and whatnot but I came up with a ring like this so this I'm going to glue up onto the top of this cap here so I'll just slide this down onto the tube itself and slowly here and I'll put that down and then it, it presses pretty I had to clean it up slightly by hand to get it to fit but I'll glue that onto that cap now you can see that I have good support for this system and I'll tilt it and now you can see it's supported down at the bottom supported at the top so that's cool and let's see here uh, once again messing around with the 3d printer because a lot of guys will use like a tape or something like that I don't know what this camera will hold but once again I fashioned up these little guys pulled it up on CAD I measured everything so this way I just slide these over the tube or like so and now I have a way to measure the water you know and they're adjustable so so I made a couple of those so I just slide them over and there's not a lot of resistance on these things they slide right down plus I have a slot in the middle so I can see if the water lines in between on the uh, on the uh, you know on the tube itself so that's uh that's pretty much it until I hook this thing up and show you uh, some more stuff but I've I've learned quite a bit about uh, manometers and their function and I finally got this one tuned in really good and I'll uh, I'll explain it and show you how it works on a uh, traditional uh, u-shaped one and you can get these things really delicate that you don't need a flow meter uh, that's how good these things can work so uh, so that's it for now 
Okay, for the components of this, this I found on Amazon. I had another regulator, but it was, in my uh, opinion, it was putting out too much pressure. It was putting out a little over one pound, and I didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, worry about damaging any of the sensitive uh, equipment inside the EVAP system or the tank sensors and stuff like that. This one actually is an adjustable and they said it adjusted from 6 inch water column to 18 inch water column and 18 inch water column uh, is around 5 eighths of a pound roughly uh, so and I've been just running this on high you can tone it down a little bit uh, but this one instead of being like a barbecue one this one was set up to go on to like a one pound propane tank so for that and actually I had it laying around and it's just a hose uh, nothing else to it. it's just a hose it has an end that will thread into this uh, so then I would thread this into here uh, from there I got uh, my air supply I put a barbed end on that and so here's my air I put a shut off a valve here uh, from there let me move around this is I still haven't finalized all this stuff yet so it's all just spaghetti on the bench uh, so from the regulator then I, what I do is I go up to another valve here and I just put a quick connect on it so I can hook this up to the smoker. I don't like hooking up the smoker to this thing because the paint can systems, they do leak and they're not going to give you an accurate reading. So that's from the regulator from here to here is that setup. So we'll put that aside. Then from there, then I have, I have a T here. So my air goes into here. This line here comes out this is this would be my test end that I would either you know plug into the car or I would uh, you know uh, check things out that way so I can you know cap it and then from that I also made a test uh, a test port for it and everybody knows 20 thousands is your is your number that your uh, computer will set a code at so anything under 20 thousands so I just drilled a 20 thousandths hole, this is that rigid plastic tubing, and I capped that off, so that's 20 thousandths there, so I can plug that into there and get a base reading to that. So that's pretty much it, and like I said, all the stuff uh, that I got, I'll put links to it. Now, in my research of this, I had been messing around with a U-shaped manometer, this is a lot more compact and basically what happens is everybody looks at these things how they're made and let me just grab this other regulator and I'll show you what happens here is okay so you get yourself a regular regulator this is the one that's putting out a little bit too much pressure and you take the nipple off of this which is this guy right here this is the part that would have hooked on to the propane tank well the first thing you notice when you take this thing off is it has a small orifice in there and that's going to uh, control the flow it won't control pressure it'll control the volume of flow that goes through this so when you hook up your shop air and it regulates it then from this side then it's going into that would go into your T here and when you cap this thing off uh, your manometer will only move a very slight amount uh, with the 20 thousandths hole and it, it was just too tight of a reading to get accurate with this small orifice on this uh, on this other regulator here it gives me about a two inch or so differential between 
full closed and a leak. So I'll show you how this one works and I'll see if I can kind of like jerry rig this one back together and show you with a U style uh, manometer and what I did to combat that. So let me get this hooked up and I'll give you a de demonstration on how this one works.